On the Red Tech Briefing today, I am delighted to welcome Brian Barletta, who writes the weekly newsletter, Sounds Profitable, which is released every Monday and focuses on all the latest news and developments in the world of podcast ad tech. Brian's worked in ad tech for more than 12 years, with the latter half of that period focused primarily on podcasting. And as far as I'm concerned, he's the expert, and that's why he is on the Red Tech Briefing with me. Thank you so much for your time, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Now, you know that Red Tech primarily talks to people in the audio space, and the vast majority of those are actually radio people. And if you think about the trajectory over the last maybe three to five years, in particular, there's been an accelerated momentum towards digital transitioning of analog audio players. They understand they've got to work in that space. They understand they're doing more streaming than ever, more podcasts than ever. I know they started maybe 10 years ago, but if you think about the world as a whole, it just is now, there's no choice. You have yeah. got to be there. And the biggest thing they struggle with is exactly the area that you focus on. And every newsletter and podcast you do, you're talking to dozens of people who are deeply embedded in the space. So I can't think of anyone better to give these people advice. How do they monetize these problems? Because they're doing it. Yeah. And the shareholders are saying, well, well, you know, we've made an investment, but when are you going to get a return? And that's sort of the big issue. And you're in ad tech, and we understand a lot of that money comes from how you position yourself and what technologies you use. And I really don't, you know, get much of it because I'm not as deeply as constant in it as you are. So help us. Help us as radio <laughs> people understand how do you how do you start your trajectory? How do you start in this space? Gotcha. To, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go so ahead, for the bro. next three days, me and you are going to be in this live studio. <laughs> We're going to break it down. For... No, I mean, it's um, it's not easy. I mean, I think mm -hmm. if it was, we wouldn't be on here. You guys would all be knocking it out of the park. I think the truth yeah. is, is that, you know, podcasting has blown up really quickly. It's been there. It's been doing well. But all of a sudden, it's unavoidable now. We look at streaming. If we look at, look at satellite and all these other things like radio, broadcast radio has stayed pretty much how it is and hasn't had to change too much. The other things have been nice add-ons and added value, but podcasting is really pushing a change and it's, and it's neat. Um, I think it's, it's not easy to monetize new media formats, but I think what's really cool is that if your radio business is doing well and you're monetizing there, the best place that I recommend is start by adding it as added value, right? Um, <clears throat> give your current advertisers a little bit of access to that podcast inventory. Mm. Um, try and keep it as similar as possible. The same type of buys that you're allowing if you're taking your radio content and bringing into podcasting, obviously try and sell um, or, or at least just discount slightly if you're gonna go that way for purely podcast original content because you don't want to you know, have nothing to show revenue wise there. But that's a great way to transition over people from one to the other. And there are a lot of hosting platforms out there that will allow you to serve your ads in both of them. I believe Triton Digital, part of the iHeart stack is a great example that will allow you to do both your broadcast radio and um, and, and your, your streaming and your podcast, I guess. So is there a risk though, Brian, once you, if you start by making it part of added value, do you start to get your advertisers uh, trained to believe it's worth less than what they're paying for your analog because you're adding it on for value that you know you're not giving it its own rate card and its own pricing and so on is there a risk well i think you should come to the table with a rate card i always okay. think that you should know exactly what it costs but i don't think it's bad to offer to specific uh advertisers that you've worked with for a while this awesome opportunity right i like right. to say that it's a great way like added value shouldn't just be like hey we're going to throw this in for free sure. but it's like hey you normally renew at six months or a year well let's increase it to you know 18 months or two years let's increase the spend by 25 percent, and i will throw in podcasting so it yeah. should be part of some sort of upsell and i don't think it cheapens it in any way because then there are ads in your content which makes it easier to ask for the next advertiser and eventually you get to the renewal point with those people you gave the added value to where you can just say, hey, it's no longer available as added value. Here's the success we drove from it. We'd love for you to make it as part of your buy. Um, we can give you preferred pricing. We can do things like that. Uh, but you move away from it slowly. But I think that if people were selling out all of their inventory, uh, that they wouldn't be curious about this question anyway. So I think bundling it is not a bad thing. And people who are podcast only focused don't have anything to bundle. 
So take advantage of that fact on radio. Take advantage of the fact that advertisers who are not yet in podcasting are interested about it. There is no advertiser who is advertising on radio who is not mm. curious about podcasting or hasn't started spending in podcasting. Good advice. So the next question, an obvious one, I can just see it searing in my brain <laughs> from a, a sales executive somewhere in the world who's saying, but I don't have any metrics to offer. How do I, we just started or we're in it for six months and we don't have scale yet. And surely these things sell on the basis of performance and scale because I just look at the giants, the mega platforms and, you know, the literally sense that they bill, but the moment they multiply it by how many people there are, it's huge numbers. Is that an issue, the metrics? You know, a, a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to say that that for that everybody can step away from that. But when I think about podcasting as like from the ground up, you know, yeah. downloads really end up being the driving number or you need a niche audience. And by having uh, high downloads, it's easy to say, here's the, you know, the CPM rate for my show. I have X number of ad slots. I get Y number of downloads. We'd love you to buy 100% share voice of an ad slot for a certain period of time. That's a very easy bit of math. But as you get deeper into the niche aspect, then you can easily say, hey, it's a sponsorship. I'd like yeah. you to have, you know, take this ad slot, but it's a flat rate because you get access to that audience. Also, this content, it lives in perpetuity or for that period of time, and I can give it to you and you can do something with it. So it's got kind of the ability to be branded content more than just an ad. It's, it's way less of a clear ad break and more room for uh, knitting it all together, especially if you do host red um, uh, which can be baked in or dynamically right. inserted. But I think the big thing here is that the, the radio companies that, that we're talking to right here are established, right? Like it's probably kind of hard to be a new radio business. And, and so you have a, a listenership and yeah. you can show that you have a listenership. You've surveyed them. They are interested in a digital product. You are digging into it. It, it shows X amount of overlap with that audience. And you can say, we'd love for you to be a launch sponsor. It's a flat rate. So I think truly the people that we're talking to today are in a position to say CPM's neat, but it doesn't show the full picture. And you know that we've driven you success. That's why you're back here at the table and really kind of do something unique. And I mm -hmm. think that's where podcasting shines. And I think that's where a good salesperson shines. So I want you to now get in a helicopter and take sort of a big view <laughs> of the last 10 years of online advertising. Just uh, based on your experience watching it, being a keen observer of the space, a keen student of the space, what have you seen as pivotal moments through those last five, 10 years? What's changed significantly and what is still to come that you think is inevitable? Big question, I know. Yeah, yeah. I want to focus on on just the the podcasting side because that's where where I can speak to the best. I mean, okay. I, I have had a lot of advantage to work in in different ad tech spaces, but you know, so much of it moves so fast, and I admit that I had more of a silo in digital, right? I was very right. much working on mobile applications. So to say I can speak to the whole of digital display, I think would be a disservice. I think in podcasting, what we've seen is it gone from, it's just baked in and the metrics are what they are to actual mm -hmm. uh, agreed upon measurement. People might not love the fact that we can't get listens, but we do get downloads. And the IEB has verified that. And here's the really cool part. At, a, at around 85% and up of all downloads in podcasting come from a listener pressing play on their device. So it's a user initiated download. And people are listening through podcasts from 58 to, or 50 to like 85% and sometimes higher of a show. So that means that we're not hearing people press play and then abandon at rates that are concerning. So that means now we have a good base. We went from just saying, this is a thing and we know how many times someone asked for the file to saying we have a metric that says this is an intent based play and we filtered out all the bad actors. We've also seen a move away from baked in as the only format. So what that would mean is like right now, we're doing this all in one shot, right? Mm -hmm. So very minimal editing. If I say an ad for Sounds Profitable, which everybody should check out, soundsprofitable.com, <laughs> it's baked in. This one file ends up on your hosting platform and that's it. If you wanted to remove that, you'd have to remove this whole segment, right? 
dynamic ad insertion still means that after we're done recording, me and you could record an ad together. It's two separate files. And then somebody on the hosting platform says, here's the episode, here's exactly where I want the break to be, and here's the ad. And then in mm -hmm. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, that ad can be switched out. It's still host read because you're participating in it with me or announcer yeah. read if I'm just reading it or I have my editor come in and read it, but it is determined where it fits by technology instead of by my audio editor. So that's allowed more flexibility. That means that if someone listens to your first episode, they can still hear the ad that was set to run in, in November. And that's really powerful. So those big things have drastically changed podcast advertising to bring it into the future. Now, the last part is the metrics, right? We only get IP address and user agent. And I know the radio folks can really relate to not getting a lot of data. You can know where it broadcasts to, but you can't necessarily know who listened to it. <laughs> so in podcasting, we know the IP address, which if it's cellular, it's pretty much junk. If it's a business, it's not really useful for um, things like attribution. It can be, but way less so. And if it's a household, it's super valuable because it's fine to say that Brian heard an ad and his wife, Sierra, converted because they had a conversation, right? That's a healthy way to look at it. So we've done a lot in podcasting to take this very little very minor bit of personal information and augment it in a way that we can do more with it that gets us closer to digital. And what's funny is in the strive to be more like digital advertising, the digital advertising space collapsed. Privacy has become a major focus. And what we do today in podcasting and have been for the last several years is what digital advertising is moving towards, which is data modeling instead of one-to-one -one privacy invasive attribution. So those are the things that have really happened in the last like five years in podcasting and a lot of it probably more so in the last three. Hmm. That's fascinating. The fact that you, as you're saying, because podcasting had limited access to individual data, it's actually in the best possible place because how the world and how people's attitudes have shifted towards yeah. <laughs> wanting to keep their privacy, which is great. Yeah. And do you think that, Okay, so, so now it means that the big boys, <laughs> the Facebooks, the Googles, et cetera, all have to think like we've already been, yes. the podcasting spaces. Is that a th major threat now? Because they have so much more, they got a bigger balance sheet. So their innovation in this space where we've been might start to erode the advantages that you've just spoken about. You know, I mean, for a certain part, right? Like, so if you put your pace, if you put your podcast on Facebook, right yeah. now, that's demographic info. So if I listen to Sounds Profitable on Facebook, now that's a piece of information that Facebook can tag about me. And Facebook doesn't have to even worry about serving ads and podcasting. They could say, I'm a podcast listener who listens to Sounds Profitable. We've mined it for all of its information. And we know that this is the type of info. And now that's something that takes money away from podcasting. Um, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's definitely interesting. I think these big companies yeah. have not cracked advertising and podcasting. I think Spotify has made a silo for audio advertising, but it's very focused on just what's inside of there. So I, I think it is healthy for bigger ad tech companies to come into podcasting. I think some of them have an advantage over us for programmatic or announcer red long tail. But I think that the bread and butter of podcasting today is still host read, whether dynamically inserted or baked in. And I think that at the end of the day, we have a lot of really powerful and what's the word for it? I don't even know how to explain it. Um, not entitled. What's the positive way of saying entitled? The creators <laughs> and po podcast creators are empowered. There we go. Empowered right. to make decisions about what advertisers they want to be associated with that I don't feel like they are in any other space. So you could say, this is really cool. I love this, but I'm not interested in another voice selling this product to my audience. We're going to need to charge a higher rate and I'll read the ad. And that just changes the game. You can't beat that. I just said mm. no. So I think it'll be healthy because a lot of podcast ad tech was built with no consideration for the greater ad tech ecosystem. It was a lot of cool. You built hosting and now the board's asking how you're going to monetize it. And they all built their own thing. So right. I'm not super worried about that yet, maybe in a few years, but I think it'll be healthy. It'll bring more advertisers in. So very, again, very interesting. You say it was built differently. We didn't think those who built these 
podcast ecosystems for advertising. Didn't firstly didn't think about it as a digital product in the way yeah. that digital advertising has been. Is that changing with you know increasing focus on AI, real time bidding, you know advertising uh, at milliseconds, scanning the universe of options for particular segments, etc. Is all of that coming to podcasting and to audio? Or because of the way the world is changing, maybe that's going to slow down and it's still going to be, you know, selling the way radio guys used to sell, where you pick up the phone and, you know, the way you described yeah. it, going and saying, hey, here's who we serve. This is the niche that's interested in this opportunity. That's the cost per thousand because it's a valuable niche. What's going to happen there? Is it going to be a hybrid or are we going to see this AI driven stuff all over the place? I'm going to say it's a hybrid. I think it always okay. can supersede it. I think that direct conversation will always bump out uh, something automatic. Um, and that's really cool to know, right? Yeah. Like that, that you can pick up the phone and say, Hey, I heard this ad. I, I would love to run something that's a competitor to it. Do you think you could block them on your programmatic stack and we'll run um, a direct host right ad? And if the price is right and the deal is, is worthwhile, they're going to go forward with it and you'll have that level of control. So I think it will be hybrid. I think programmatic is increasing, but we're talking under 5% of all podcast advertising is programmatic. I think there are subsets of that that are like smaller marketplaces that do similar decision making, but publishers have a lot of control, whether it's saying I want to approve every creative or saying I want to block the domains or the IAB content categories or a number of different things that they yes. want to exclude. And at the end of the day, you get to pick which I guess like which endpoints your content is available in in digital display, you just set it up and you want to connect to everything because you want to get as much fill in as possible in podcasting. There's not an everything, right? A lot of it is you have to make like one or two really specific decisions because we're sending back the whole file at once, right? We're not, we're not making decisions as you go to page to page for different content yeah, sure. where we have to build that file all in real time. So you can only call out to so many other things before you have to give up and send the file back. Brian, as we round up, yeah, advice for people who are getting into this so that they don't make the mistakes that hundreds of others have made. And I'm hoping you've made a few that you've learned <laughs> from so you can perhaps, you know, say, you know, I thought about doing it this way and that way. And actually, that wasn't the best. Instead, what I've learned is this route when we start, what would you say? Give yeah. us two to three minutes just Talk us through how we would go about this and not make the errors that the pathfinders did. Yeah, I, honestly, if anybody wanted to learn about podcast ad tech, it's so accessible right now that probably about two days of not taking meetings and not answering your emails, and you'd have the same base knowledge that I know. And you're right, like the difference between me and that person is probably the millions of dollars of damages I've cost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mess things up. That's part of it. That's ad tech. That's what you do. You learn. There's not a guardrail on a feature and you accidentally over deliver something. Something is not clicked correctly. There's not an approval process. All of these different things lead to learning and you unfortunately need to spend money to learn a lot of this. My biggest suggestion would be to find someone on your team who is passionate about podcasting and work with them to empower them. Whether that's they start using tools like Thought Leaders, Magellan AI, Raphonic, or Podscribe to figure out what inventory is out there mm -hmm. and say, I'd like to be on these podcasts and figure out how to contact them. Or uh, you get a seat on a programmatic platform like um, AdSwiz's Marketplace or Acast Marketplace and you buy through them or even Spotify for example, and you buy ads through their tools and say, these are the types of listeners I want to target. Forget about the shows, really. You can do a little bit of the shows, but mm -hmm. the listeners, and this is what I want to see. Look at the results, see what's valuable there on the advertising side. And that's great for those brands, the, the, the radio brands that want to dig into it. Um, for the hosting side of it, I really think that you know, if you have radio content, just start repurposing it. Triton Digital through Omni Studios has a tool that will automatically do that. Uh, Stream Guys uh, is a another tool that will do that. Wooshka, I believe, as well does that, where they can take all your streaming audio feeds, they can use the metadata appropriately, they can tag it, they can rip it into a podcast automatically. You can edit it from there, creates the ad markers, just repurpose it. Set it as step one as your content is now on demand, and then figure that out. Work with your salespeople, find an eager salesperson who's excited about it and craft a plan and make it invite only, make it upsell only. 
and just work with those people and really empower them. Because the truth is, is you can't hire for this role. You can poach from another company. And what you're going to learn is that the people who know how to do this know the silo, right? You hire for someone from ACAST or Megaphone from Art19. They are going to be fantastic at executing on that unique platform, but not about overall podcast ad tech. You hire somebody who knows Google Ad Manager, right? The Google Campaign Manager. They're going to be overqualified for some of this stuff. So take somebody you know internally who's passionate, who needs a chance, carve out time, and let them dig into it. And you can be up and running in a week. It's really not that hard to do it if you give them time. And honestly, as you're going into the holiday season, there's got to be somebody who probably has a little bit of breathing room to research and use a platform and figure it out. Um, and, and being completely honest, I love when people email and ask me questions about this stuff. I want more radio in podcasting. It is ridiculous that there's not more, whether it's the advertisers in radio or the publishers. And you got to put, you got to experiment, right? Your content directly ported over might not be the answer, but it'll be the motivator to show you and your team and higher ups that it's worth investing in. Brilliant. Brian Barletta from Sounds Profitable. Thank you so much for joining me on the Red Tech Briefing. Thanks for having me.